Good morning. Um, I read this article the other day about it being the 65 year anniversary of the invention of the black box recorder and that it was an Australian guy that actually initiated the invention. So I'm interested in aviation and things like that. Morbidly interested in plane crashes and those aircraft investigation shows. So the article um, spoke to me and I had a read. And I actually found it really interesting enough to make this video and share my thoughts. Um, so David Warren, he's an Australian guy. Back in 1934, when he was six years old, his father gave him a, a radio, a crystal radio set. And that sort of bred in him uh, an interest in science, you know, to be able, that you could communicate with people via this this crystal radio set. And back in 1934, that was that would have been quite interesting for a young young boy. Um, and then his father sadly has boarded a plane, um, the Miss Hobart, October 19th, 1934, and it's left Melbourne and not made it to its destination in Tasmania. It was last heard from over Wilson's prom and it crashed without really any information as to why. There were 10 people on board, including David Warren's father, and, sorry, 12 people on board, 10 passengers and two crew and the cause of the crash was always a mystery. So as you can imagine, this little boy, he's had these two things happen. He's had his father give him this incredible gift of the radio, with crystal radio for communication, and has sadly left, lost his life in this plane crash. And so I can imagine him processing this over his childhood and, and it breeding a you know desire to get into science and something to do with planes and so he did went down the path of an aviation career in research and working out why planes crash when they crash and so after World War II plane crashes became more um, normal I guess you could say planes were jet planes were flying ha higher and faster in 1954 David Warren was a research scientist at the Aeronautical Research Lab here in Australia. And two years prior to that, the, in 1952, in the UK, the Comet jet planes became our first airliners. So passenger plane, so that's 1952. 1953 and 1954, there were three crashes, all three shortly after takeoff, all three killing everybody on board all three offering very little information as to what happened. So you've got this young fellow over in Australia who, you know, sees this happen, and obviously it would be on his radar, being in the industry that he's in, and having the background that he's had. So he, um, you know, he's, he's got this little thing in his head, well, what do we have to do to know what happened in those, in, in these crashes? And so he's gone to a trade fair in Germany as part of his career, and he's seen a little mini tape recorder uh, called the Mini Fun, and he's, you know, sort of put the two ideas together that could you put a recording device in the cockpit and hear what what was going on, and know what was going on by instruments, airspeed, and warning signals and things like that going off, and if you knew those things, could you then make modifications so that it might not happen again. And so he's come back from this trade show with, you know, this light bulb moment and he's gone to his boss and he said, you know, I've got this amazing idea. And his boss come back as, you know, we talk about tall poppy syndrome here in Australia, apparently it was relevant, relevant back then. And he was told it's not your job, give it to the research department, get back to work. Um, it's not really a needed thing. We haven't got plane crashes happening here in Australia. Um, get back to work. So he's set, handed it over to the research department where it sat doing nothing for a year. And he's brought it up again and he's been told, look, send it overseas, maybe they're interested. So he sent some of the information overseas and he ended up in front of um, a gentleman named Sir Robert Hardingham. And he first got the chance to present his information and to someone who was interested. This guy was really interested. He happened to be the secretary for the British Air Registration Board. 
Regulation Board. So he's handed it over to the British Civil Aviation Authorities and they manufactured it. They put it in the planes, made it mandatory. The Australian government, their response was, oh no, we can't have those. They're snooping devices. Can't put them in our planes. We won't have Big Brother listening. So a little bit of time goes on. Fortunately for the aviation world, that stand didn't last long. And within two years, it was rolled out in the USA, made mandatory on all commercial airlines in the USA, and quite quickly worldwide. So now we've got these black boxes in all of our planes that tell us, in most cases, when they can be found, what happened, and have given extraordinary ways, opportunities for improvements to be made to the aviation industry so that, you know, we can all jump on a plane and hopefully know that we're safe and that we're going to get to where we're going. Um, interestingly enough, no matter how this, how much this guy put into it, um, David Warren never received any royalties. Australia was too late to the show. Um, I believe there was a thousand pound payment made to the Department of Defense for the original IP, um, but nothing to David Warren who lived and breathed this, I can imagine, for it to come to such a interesting fruition. Um, I don't think that he holds any, held any malice. He, he passed away back in 2010. Um, his original demo unit is in the National Museum of Australia. And in 2002, he was officially recognized for his work and for his invention. And he was given the Australian officer, sorry, the officer of the Order of Australia for aviation science. So quite amazing. Um, I, it made me want to know more about his career. Um, I, I love delving into things like that. Sometimes it can be a distraction, but have a read of the story if it's something that interests you. Um, probably what my biggest thing that m was interesting was the links between being given that crystal radio set and losing his father in the in the plane crash so having that trauma and then however he dealt with it through his life bringing it to such such a life-saving invention so thank you to the uh, authors of the article that wrote it and i hope you enjoy